the electric car market is booming, raking in a whopping $384 billion. Everywhere you turn, the buzz is all about EVs. Even the US president chimes in, declaring, The future of the auto industry is electric. There's no turning back. Countries are making bold moves, announcing bans on gasoline-powered cars. After weeks of debate, MEPs voted in favor of a ban on sales of petrol, diesel and hybrid cars from 2035. In some places, this decision has been stamped with the urgency of an executive order. We will be the first jurisdiction in the world to require all new cars to be sold to be alternative fuel cars. But pause for a moment. Is this a realistic vision or mere wishful thinking? Dive into this electrifying expose as we debunk myths and shed light on the often overlooked nuances of the EV revolution. We're uncovering truths that politicians and green activists might have missed. So before we rev up, do us a solid hit that like button and subscribe to keep up with the ride. Trust us, this is a journey you won't want to miss. Let's roll. First, let's address the elephant in the room, the colossal consumption of oil and its detrimental environmental impact. While it's a universal consensus that this is a problem, with activists passionately advocating for change, does transitioning to EVs genuinely offer a solution? Picture a world where every driveway is occupied by an electric car. Today, electric vehicles make up a fleet of roughly 14 to 18 million. Some envision this soaring to a staggering 100 million, with others ambitiously forecasting as many as 500 million. But even with these optimistic projections, the reduction in global oil consumption would hover around 10%. Impressive? Yes. Enough to free us from the clutches of oil? Not quite. Our global infrastructure is deeply intertwined with oil. Beyond the cars we drive, oil powers the airliners connecting our world, buses shuttling city dwellers, massive trucks transporting goods, and ships crossing oceans. The agricultural machinery that ensures our food supply, the generators in remote areas providing electricity, and even the equipment mining essential metals like copper for electric vehicle batteries. All these predominantly run on oil. When you factor in the decades-long lifespan of many of these machines, it becomes evident that our bond with oil is not easily broken. Now let's entertain another thought. What if not just our cars, but all of our machinery, from airplanes to agricultural equipment, made the leap to electricity. Sounds ideal, doesn't it? But here's where the plot thickens. Transitioning to electric doesn't automatically mean we're stepping into a greener future. Contrary to the pristine image often painted of electric vehicles, they come with their own environmental baggage. Let's delve deeper into why electric isn't always synonymous with eco-friendly. Electric cars have long been touted as the answer to our environmental woes. But as we peel back the layers of this green narrative, some unsettling truths emerge. Globally, the primary source of electricity isn't the clean, renewable energy many assume powers their electric cars. Gas accounts for 21% of energy generation, with oil dominating at 33%. In stark contrast, a mere 11% originates from clean energy sources. So, when an electric car owner beams with pride about their zero emissions vehicle, one can't help but wonder if they're fully informed about the electricity grid that fuels their ride. But let's delve even deeper into the green image painted around electric vehicles. For every electric car battery produced, there's an environmental cost. A staggering 500,000 pounds of minerals and rock must be extracted. While stringent regulations limit such intensive mining in places like the US, less regulated countries bear the environmental and social consequences. These regions often rely on exploitative labor practices, sometimes even resorting to child labor in harrowing conditions. Now let's talk carbon footprints. Before an electric car even graces your driveway, it has already emitted 10 to 20 tons of carbon dioxide. 
These emissions arise from the extensive mining, manufacturing, and shipping processes essential to produce the car. It's not the zero emissions fairy tale many believe. In fact, an enlightening study from Volkswagen suggests that for an electric vehicle's initial 60,000 miles, its carbon footprint might even eclipse that of a conventional car. Only after clocking around 100,000 miles does the electric vehicle begin to show its purported environmental advantages. And even then, it merely achieves a 20 to 30% reduction in emissions, far from the zero many imagine. Electric cars may offer a glimmer of hope in our fight against environmental degradation, but they aren't the silver bullet solution many make them out to be. It's imperative we embark on the journey towards sustainable transport with full knowledge of the broader picture. Building on the misconception of electric vehicles being the green saviors, there's another dimension that often slips under the radar the recycling challenge of EV batteries. When we're talking about electric cars, the battery itself is not really recyclable, right? This is a nasty, for the environment, is not really good. Right? The intricate web of green doesn't end once an electric vehicle starts to function using supposedly cleaner energy. When these vehicles reach the end of their lifespan, we're confronted with the daunting task of managing their batteries. Unlike your regular household batteries, EV batteries are intricate behemoths that weigh hundreds of kilograms, packed with precious metals and hazardous materials. The problem with the battery is a very complicated machine. People think it's like a box of simple goo. It's not. It's a complicated machine with thousands of parts. It's a machine just like an engine. You know, a steel engine is basically made up of steel and a couple other metals. You could just take it, crush it, melt it, and recycle it pretty easily. The battery you have to disassemble very carefully. Recycling these batteries isn't just about breaking them down. It's a sophisticated process that involves safely extracting and reclaiming materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Not only is this process energy intensive and technologically challenging, but it's also incredibly expensive. If you Google up a picture of somebody trying to recycle a battery, they're wearing a hazmat suit. It takes half an hour, hours to recycle one battery. Then you have to figure out how to get all the chemicals separated. It's not easy. As we stand today, Few facilities globally are equipped to handle this kind of specialized recycling. And while advancements are being made in this domain, the solutions aren't scaling as rapidly as the production of electric vehicles. While the front-end emissions of EVs might be lower than their fossil-fueled counterparts, the back-end environmental cost and the complexities of recycling them can't be ignored. Suppose we had the magic of Doctor Strange to resolve all the concerns we've highlighted. Would that suddenly transform EVs into the eco-friendly utopia we envision? Our politicians certainly claim that. State of California today, um, air quality officials voting a short time ago to require all new cars sold in the state to be zero emission vehicles by 2035. Just about Picture the enormous uptick in electricity consumption if we were to make this shift an entire fleet of electric vehicles would be constantly drawing power from our already stretched grids. Recall the events of last summer in California. After California, Governor Gavin Newsom announced that the state was moving towards exclusively selling electric vehicles in just over a decade. He's now asking residents to avoid charging their EVs in order to conserve energy. The power grid was under so much pressure that the state's leadership had to appeal to residents to hold off on charging their electric cars. To successfully transition away from gasoline and into a fully electric vehicular landscape would mean not just a slight modification, but a colossal enhancement of our current electric infrastructure. Essentially, we'd be talking about doubling our existing grid capacity. And yet, in the foreseeable plans of regions like California, no such comprehensive expansion is evident. What's the next logical step if we're ill-equipped to meet such demand? Energy rationing? We could see blackouts with portions of cities going dark simply because there isn't enough electricity to go around. This paints a stark contrast to the glossy green future that many envision with widespread electric vehicle adoption. As we wrap up this electrifying dive into the world of EVs, it becomes abundantly clear. 
While electric vehicles are a promising advancement in the realm of sustainable transport, they are not the panacea we once believed. From understanding the sources of our electricity to the realities of battery recycling and the limitations of our current grid infrastructure, there's much to ponder. The path towards a truly sustainable future is intricate and multifaceted. It requires us to question, innovate, and continually evolve our understanding. And as conscientious citizens and consumers, it's our responsibility to stay informed, look beyond the surface, and advocate for holistic solutions. Now, to our incredible viewers who've made it this far, you are the real MVPs. Your thirst for knowledge and commitment to understanding complex issues is genuinely commendable. If you found this video enlightening and believe in the power of informed decision-making, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support fuels our motivation to keep shedding light on these intricate topics. And if you have insights, questions, or feedback on today's topic, drop a comment below. We cherish our community's engagement and look forward to diving deep into more enlightening topics with you. Lastly, a huge shout out to all who've already subscribed and to those who've just joined our journey. Buckle up. With your support, we aim to bring more in-depth analyses and spark crucial conversations. Remember, together, we can drive the change we wish to see in the world. So stay charged, stay informed, and let's keep the dialogue alive.